so this is this is the basic 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 building block of linear regression so what we have already talked about is basically linear regression using least squared cost function so this is called the cost function and now before we kind of go ahead and understand the rest of the course uh, just a minute which is basically to kind of appreciate what we have learned here which is a very 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 important and fundamental concept in machine learning overall which is the concept of cost function cost function basically measures how bad your predictions are right in this case we basically measure uh, how bad our house price prediction is as compared to the real estate brokers prediction right how how bad is that in this case so before we kind of go ahead and get through the rest of the course there's a very important concept that we talked about right now here which is called the cost function so cost function is basically nothing but a very small idea which is uh, which is a way in the way, way in which we basically measure how bad our model performance is as compared to real life data right and that's something that you would probably fairly see across all kind of machine learning algorithms that you will ever work on uh, this is this is absolutely fundamental to a lot of lot of uh, parametric methods actually not uh, non parametric machine learning methods but for all parametric machine learning that you will uh, models that you will ever have the idea would be the same that you would have a cost function which basically measures how bad your model performance is as compared to uh, real life data and based on that your goal, whole goal of job of the algorithm would be basically finding parameters such that you can minimize uh, this cost function right so that's the concept of linear regression and that's concept of all kinds of parametric models that you would ever see this idea is the same that you would have a cost function which basically could be something like this squared of the deviation it could be absolute value of the deviation it could be something else also the cost functions the form it looks like would change across different algorithms but the thing to keep in mind is this that your goal of all kind of algorithm would be basically find out in case for our example beta naught and beta one such that this particular function is minimized right so that's it so that's the concept uh, of cost function now let's get started with linear regression so linear regression is using least squared cost function is known as ordinary least squared linear regression right so obviously you understand the point of linear regression so linear regression because we are trying to get to plot us trying to plot a straight line relationship between y and x least squared because we are trying to uh, minimize the cost function which is basically a squared cost function right so our cost function is a squared cost function and we are trying to figure out the values of beta naught and beta one such that this value is minimized right so it's the least value so that's why it's called a least squared cost function uh, obviously let's know the basics of cost linear regression which is absolutely true with all kinds of machine learning algorithms also so the area that we have talked about is the independent variable the price is a dependent variable uh, since we are only one, using one one feature right one independent variable so this is a univariate uh, simple linear regression later on in the day we will also talk about cases where we have more than one feature right it could be house price for example is just not dependent on area it's dependent on neighborhood it's dependent on a lot of things right uh, garage area and all of those so there are a lot of features that actually contribute to a house price so in those cases when it's just not dependent on one particular one single feature then it's called a multivariate and we are trying to find the relationship combining all of those feature and the sales price that's when we are trying to do multivariate linear regression in this case since as of now for basic understanding we are just concerned with one single feature right which is the area of the house and that is that that assumption is basically the assumption of univariate or simple linear regression so simple linear regression is an approach for predicting a response using a single variable uh, it is assumed that the two variables are linearly related hence we try to find a linear regression a linear relationship that predicts a response variable as accurately as possible as a function of the feature of the independent variable so now let's consider this value of uh, where we have value of y with correspondingly x right so in this case we are basically taking this example where we have x uh, this is not the housing data set problem which is this is just a simple x vectors this is x uh, values and we have the corresponding y values so we define x as a feature vector which basically consists of x1 x2 so on and so forth my x1 is basically the value 0 x2 is basically the value 1 x3 is the value 2 x4 is the value 3 and so on and so forth right and y is a response vector which is basically y1 y2 yn 
and y1 is 1, y2 is 3, y3 is 2, y4 is 5 and we have such 10 observations right so there are 10 values of x there are 10 values of observe uh, 10 values of y and there are uh, that's why we say there are 10 observations right so this is how the scatter plot of the data looks like right so we plot this data you can clearly see there's a again there's a there's a there's an inference that you can see just from drawing the diagram that there's probably exists a linear relationship between y and x right so now we have to find a line which fits this particular data points the best right so now we know that what do we need to do to fit a line we basically if we have to say that we want to find a line we have to find parameters beta naught and beta one now we also want to say the line which fits the best now what is the criteria for it to be best is basically simple the deviation of the points from the predicted line as per beta naught and beta one should be basically be minimum right so to kind of reiterate the concept we have multiple points out here so our goal of the algorithm is basically to build a line such that the deviation of the points from this right so this is this is for any given x we would have the y which we can predict and there's a real life y right so we basically try and minimize the deviation of this predicted y from the real life y right the y actual so predicted and this so the, that is the whole goal right so we basically want to find out y equals to beta naught plus beta 1x right so we basically want to find out beta naught and beta 1 such that this values right this values uh, are minimum right so me this values are basically nothing but the deviation from the predicted value the predicted value would for any x is given by putting in the value of x here right so if you put x equals to 5 uh, then you would basically get a value of y right so that is your predicted y value and then for 5 you would basically have some y value from the data set already so your goal of the, your machine learning algorithm in linear regression is basically to find the line which is basically represented as beta naught plus beta one such that your beta one and uh, your deviations are basically minimum. So now we are going to talk about a very familiar technique which is called the least square technique. So least square technique is basically assuming the fact that uh, your y na yi equals to beta naught plus beta one xi plus some error, right? Uh, and your job of your algorithm is basically to minimize this error so what is this error the error is basically nothing but the difference between a prediction and the uh difference between the prediction the prediction is hxi right you remember hxi is basically nothing but your uh beta naught plus beta one xi so that is called hxi so if hxi is what is your predicted and yi is basically the actual value so then this particular thing is called the residual error and your job is to minimize the total residual error across all data points. So then you basically define your cost function, the squared error function, which is basically a function of beta naught and beta one, right? And your job is to find beta naught and beta one such that this particular thing, right? This cost function is minimized. So this is a cost function, which is based on beta naught and beta one. Now we have to find beta naught and beta one such that this cost function is minimized. Now that is basically to do that you have to solve a set of linear equations. Uh, we can probably uh, you can refer to external resources also to kind of understand what you are trying to do here. But the understanding is that there's a, there's two sets of equations that you would have if you kind of try and solve this. So what you would try and do is briefly I'm kind of explaining you the steps is you would try and take a derivative of this particular example with respect to beta naught and then you try and take a exam derivative with respect to beta one equate both of them to zero because you know that at the minimum value if you want to get the minimum value of this then the derivative of this particular thing with respect to beta naught should be zero the derivative of this particular thing with respect to beta one should be zero and you solve those two equations you would basically get up with this uh, answers so your beta one value should be ssxy ssxy by ssx which is nothing but covariance of x y by sigma of x so ssxx is nothing but standard deviation of x and ssxy is nothing but covariance of xy right so this is covariance of xy by sigma x 
and beta 1 is nothing but y bar minus y bar is a mean of y and x bar is mean of x and beta 1 is nothing but this particular value that you already have covariance minus sigma x, covariance by sigma x so if you these are the two equations if you solve for this particular equation you would get up with the values of beta naught and beta 1 and as i already said you ssxy is nothing but covariance of xy into sigma x sigma y and ssxx is nothing but uh, the standard deviation of x right so variance sigma x s square so if you do all of this and you plot this you will basically get this straight line right so this is the straight line which is out of all possible straight lines that could have been drawn on this graph this is a straight line which basically reduces the deriva deviations of the predicted value and the actual value by the minimum amount right so if you for any other line the deviations of the predicted value on the straight line and the actual values would be higher than the deri deviations that are possible on this line right so in this and you can see this right the deviations are very small for most of the points right there are probably some points here which the, the deviation is high but across most of the points the deviation is actually not that high so that's the concept of uh, that's a that's basically the entire thing that you wanted to understand about linear regression in a very short and simple example right so in linear regression you can just solve for that particular equation and that's a matrix based equation solving and if you do that equation solving you can get up with the solution of beta naught and beta one that's one way of solving there is a second way which we are going to discuss right after this uh, which is called gradient descent which is another way of solving the same thing right the way we found out beta naught and beta one uh, we can do that by now taking a gradients and taking the derivatives and equating them to zero and solving multiple linear equations could be tough so that's why we we want to look for something which is more intuitive and easier to kind of uh, do in case of a uh, lot of variables uh, so that's the thing that you need to keep in mind but as of now you have understood how to do linear regression why to do and what to do everything uh, as of now right so the why is basically you want to you think there's a linear relationship that is existing now to do a linear relationship what you need to do is basically get the two parameters beta naught and beta one right that's all it requires to plot any straight line on this world right anywhere ever if you want to plot straight line there are only two things that matter which is basically the beta naught and the beta one right once you have that your straight line you can, that those are two parameters that you require for plotting now after that you basically saw that how to get those beta naught and beta one values is basically nothing but you basically solve for these two equations first you differentiate your cost function with respect to beta naught and equate it to zero second you just differentiate your cost function with respect to beta one and equate it to zero and from those two equations you basically if you solve those linear equations you come up with this solution where beta naught is basically nothing but covariance of x y uh, into sigma x sigma y by s x sigma square x and uh, beta naught equals to y bar minus beta 1 into x bar right y bar being the mean of y x bar being the mean of x so if you do solve using your uh, equation method that's the solution of beta naught and beta 1 which gives you the line which is minimum cost function right least cost function so now we are going to try and go ahead and understand the second way of doing this which is called the gradient descent but before we do that let's just kind of get familiarized with the small notions so xi basically denotes a predictor in our case it's the area yi denotes a response variable which is a price uh, as a pair xy yi is called a training example uh, for example our second training example is x2 y2 uh, which you can probably have a fill in the blanks using what is the second training example so we would have basically m such trading examples in the data set and each pair right each pair of x comma y is one example so number of observations that you have is basically the number of uh, examples in your training data so this is the entire thing is called your training set so now if you look back in the example that we used there were 10 variables right so we had x and y values and we had 10 such pairs of x y values right so our training set basically consists of 10 examples right so those are some basic examples in our case john basically has 1460 data sets of data points that you already know of right since the last few lectures he has been talking about this 1460 uh, data sets and what all he wants to do with it so in our case we have basically the lot area and the house prices for 1460 houses right so number of houses in our example is a is a number of training examples that we have in our training set 
so that's it now the last part which is about last part in this lecture uh, is basically about cost functions so cost function is something that we have already talked about it's basically nothing but measuring how bad your model is performing as compared to real values right so in this case it's y pred minus y actual square uh, it could be any other form uh, think a while why it is square and why you are not just directly adding the y pred minus y actual uh, point to note in mind is there are points which are both above so in real life there would be points which are both above and beyond the line right so above and below the line right so there are both like points gonna be lie above the line as well as beyond the line so what happens if you add directly y pred minus y actual right why are you having cost function where you are squaring the terms and adding them and why not adding them directly so think about this a while you will get the answer for sure uh, so just keep this in mind y pred minus y actual is basically y pred minus y actual and y pred minus actual so they are in two different directions right so just keep that in mind so, so, so i probably already given out the answer but i don't want to exactly give out the answer think why we needed to square that in the first place to add them but that's the understanding of cost function cost function basically measures how bad your deviations are from your predicted line so the predicted straight line so your predicted points are basically all the points on the straight line right so these are your all the points on the straight lines are predicted points and for each of the data points you would basically for each x value you would basically have a corresponding y value that is the actual data point and you have the predicted point right and then you make check the deviation and that's that's the concept of cost function so uh, we choose basically uh, we basically choose parameters theta is basically theta call it theta call it beta call it whatever you are so these are basically sometimes they use interchangeably so don't worry about the notation yet uh, theta is basically the same thing theta naught plus theta one x right so theta is basically the parameters so theta call it beta whatever you call it basically the parameters of the model are to, to be chosen in such a way such that your deviation right the cost function is basically minimum that is the goal of your machine learning algorithm at the end of the day whether be it linear regression or whether it be any other parametric model the understanding of the uh, cost function is basically the same right so cost function in our case is basically measured by h theta xi h theta xi is nothing but the prediction of xy given parameters theta naught and theta one right in our example so given my parameters are theta naught and theta one what is the predicted value of xi right because xi and yi is one training example right so in our case we have training example xi yi right x i y i and you would have different values here and you have the values here right this is a training data set now you would come up with a beta naught and beta one let's say for any pair of beta naught and beta one or theta naught theta one whatever you call it you would basically check a y prediction right so y prediction is normally denoted as y hat so you would get a value out here as well and the and the difference between these two values right is basically what is the square of these two values so if it's say five and this is say seven so then seven minus five square right which is basically equal to four and you do this for all the values right all the data points that are there you do this calculation you add all the values up here so this is four in first case and you get all the values you add them up and take their average right so that is the cost function that we use and uh, obviously theta is a coefficient of our x which is basically theta or call it beta naught beta one whatever it is so that's how you represent it so just keep that in mind so this is h theta basically means that the h h is basically a function uh, function of x y which is basically given x y it predicts gives you the values of prediction right so given the uh, x coordinate it gives you the predicted y coordinate uh, given the theta naught values theta naught and theta one values and that's it so now we uh, now we have understood everything that we needed to understand about basic linear regression so linear regression is all about plotting a straight line why because we think there's a linear relationship because one variable changes and there's a casual relationship understand that that the, it, there's one variable which is independent the other variable which is dependent so that's why we plot a straight line now if we plot a straight line we understand that to plot a straight line we need two parameters that we need to figure out 
theta naught and theta one or beta naught beta one whatever you call it and then once you get to that the next question to understand it what is the correct value of beta naught and beta one i should choose the answer to that is the one that basically minimizes your deviations of your predicted values from your actual values how do you measure that deviation is something which is called cost function and already based on whatever we have learned we have already seen one matrix equation solving way of kind of getting to the values of beta naught and beta one now that is something that is cumbersome and cost probably costly if you have a lot of features right in case we this case we have just one feature beta naught and beta one now imagine if you have 50 different features right so using that equation solving method probably might be a bit more rigorous so those are the cases where we opt for a much simpler and easier to understand technique called gradient descent which is the thing that we are going to cover in the next lecture log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates